Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing today? Where's the music? There's the music. How's everyone doing today? It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, my Juge. Do debts. Let's go, Rangers. Where are we going? Am I in the right place? Yeah, sure. Why not? It's always the right place. Right place, right time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Woo! Is my audio working? Yeah, I unmuted myself. Sweet. Uh, enter to win a spool of pla. No one prints with anymore. You, you can pick your filament. Eric, Eric, Eric with a K. Y you can pick your filament. If you win the spool of filament from Polymaker, you can pick if you want pla corn plastic, if you want plastic bottles, or if you want God's gift to material engineering ABS or ASA. If you like plan to print something that'll sit outside. Um, you can pick your filament though. Um, yeah, late today. Um, sorry, I had stuff going on that came up that took time out of my ability to go live. And my overlay is already broken. Nice. So there we go. Uh, pick up a bottle on the way home. I still have, I still have the bottle of olive oil. <laughs> so for those who haven't watched the video, um, yesterday's video that was funny that actually no joke um for those that don't know the april fools video this year by the way anytime a youtuber mispronounces something they call something the wrong thing or they do something that you know isn't something you would say like hey i'd rather overcook a steak than undercook it they're baiting you to engage in comments in the description like below the video you dummies you're, you're, you're not being big brain by going into the comments going, you refer to it as a Voron V1.5. It's a Voron V1.8. I know, I did that on purpose. So you would bait, so I could bait you and farm you for engagement. And you still fall for that shit. I love it, keep doing it, it's great. But like, try and make jokes out of it though. Uh... <laughs> yeah, anytime, anytime, especially a big YouTube channel, anytime, especially on On's title, anytime there's, there's text on screen, and it's spelt incorrectly, odds are they did that on purpose because there's a certain subset of people that have to point out every little mistake that they see. They have to, and they get farmed for engagement end over end, it's hilarious. So. Yeah, like baiting engagement is, is just And it's absolutely hilarious because people still fall for it. Uh, so saying today is Tuesday. Exactly. Exactly. What about Big Tree Tech Wi-Fi? Oh, that sucks. Uh, well, I don't know. They, they're sending me a, a, a Big Tree Tech Pi 2, whatever the heck it's called. Um, so they're sending me that. Um, so I'm going to play with it at some point. Um, but in the meantime, hey, I'm. I'm Works progressing on the Helldiver's armor. Um, I'm probably gonna get sand all over. How's that? I've never actually seen this on me yet. Oh yeah, that, that. I had to reprint this. I had to reprint the whole chest in the back part for scaling. I think that, that works better. That works better because it'll have the shoulder on. Because the shoulders are huge on these. Eh, yeah, I'll make it work. Yeah. So how's everyone doing today? How's everyone doing today? Uh, today is, should be a nice, relaxing, easy stream. Um, we are finishing up the Trident rebuild and by rebuild, um, firmware stuff. We got it mechanically reassembled. We just got to go through the firm, firmware stuff. Hello Diver stream was on. I want to do more of them, but we need more people from the community. That's the thing. I need to like organize it in advance with people who have the game that are okay streaming or okay being on stream. Everything's covered in dust. Luckily, I was like, hey, it's kind of nice outside. It's supposed to be nice outside. I'll, I'll go outside and start sanding stuff. And then it started snowing. Modeling a new buster halter. What the heck is that? What the heck is a buster halter? We speak English here. Uh, swear like a sailor. That's okay. You can swear on Twitch. You can swear on YouTube too, but I try not to because uh, it, it 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 was weird the first time I went to like a rep rep fest, 
and somebody came up to say, hi, I enjoy your show. And I'm like, that's great. And like, these are my kids. They also watch your show. And the kids are like, the age where you shouldn't be dropping F-bombs around. So I'm like, I really got to watch my swearing on this channel. <laughs> the snow is melting. My brother's up in Ottawa and they got like a foot of snow last night, apparently. Uh, gotta clean all this. I got dust and grit all over everything because I've been working on the, the armor. Uh, did the SPL kit arrive in multiple pieces? I haven't checked yet. I haven't checked yet. I haven't gone to the, the PO box this week. I will probably check tomorrow. I just haven't had a chance to go today. Something came up that I had to take care of before stream. So that's why I was late. Get this all cleaned off. There we go. Minor tremor. Yeah, there was an earthquake. There was an earthquake. Hooray for building codes, eh? Hooray for modern building codes. Um, yeah, usually I check the P.O. box. If, if I don't get a notification that something has arrived at the P.O. box, I check it like every two weeks, usually. So usually like the first week of the month and midway through the month, I'll, I'll just stop by the P.O. box and check it out to see if there is anything. <laughs> um, unless I get a notification that something is coming. I'm waiting on Flexi Spot of all things. I've got Flexi Spot. I finally, I finally took the offer from Flexi Spot because they send out like every six months. They reach out to every YouTuber on the planet, and they're like, "Hey, can we sponsor a video?" And I'm like, "You know, what? I don't like raising desk, but guess what? My wife needs a, a new desk." So I, I'm like, "Yeah, sure." So I've got the top of it. I've got the cable management tray, but I don't have the frame for it. It hasn't showed up yet. It's been like two weeks. I'm like, "God, guys, I don't, I don't want to store stuff here the whole time." Maybe I should take the mat off because this is going to slide everywhere. A decent shake. I mean, I, I'm down for a good milkshake at times, but. Uh, next week is supposed to be. Yeah, it's supposed to be really nice. Like, I'm, I'm hoping next week's supposed to be really nice. So two things. I've got to build this stupid thing because we got my kid a giant playground thing from Costco for his birthday because he loves climbing and whatnot and we have nothing in our backyard. So we got him this, so I got to build this. So that'll be next week. But also, um, I want to try and get a good chunk of the Helldiver stuff prepped for paint. Um, FedEx, I don't think it's FedEx, it might be FedEx. I don't think FedEx, uh, it was shipped like DHL, I believe. Uh, I should stream the build? No, because it's in my backyard. And unfortunately, with the way things are with the internet, I don't want you all, I don't want anyone knowing anything about where my house is. Check Discord, additive manufacturing channel. A MakerBot replicator that has not been used for three plus years. So I don't get the whole thing. Like, no, this isn't calling you out, but like, if a printer sits and doesn't move for three years, other than like oil drying up or something like that, it, it shouldn't, like, and dust. It hasn't moved for three years. It should work exactly like it did three years ago. It's just a little dusty. Um, the filament has been sitting in the printer all this time. That's impressive. Uh, if it's not perfectly dry, slice with maker print software default. So this is a MakerBot replicator press. That's like a decade old machine at this point. Very stringy, but that's the filament. Very cracked. Oh, that's right. Probably printed on a raft. So the thing with replicators, um, MakerBot replicators, we had one at the shop I used to work at and they printed um, for the sign-in. Every day you would have to go in and, and they, instead of buying a system that uses like key cards and whatever, you know, you, you got your little fob and you tag in with it for entering the buildings and clocking in, clocking out. They, they, they DIY'd it. They just bought a bunch of blank RFID tabs like people use for, you know, making the Nintendo NFC stuff uh, for cloning stuff. And then they just, they, they basically wrote their own and it cost like a fraction. But the thing was they needed boxes to put everything in. So at first they were cardboard, but then they printed a bunch on a MakerBot replicator. So it's literally a cube with a couple holes in it and, a, and, and the top was open for a screen, right? I have, have you ever measured ghosting in, in percentage, in fractions of a foot? Because the box, I, I sh do I have an example here? I have, I need something to show. So the box, 
this this doesn't have my address on it. The box was about this big, and there was a hole right here. The ghosting went to about here. So it was like a little hole like right here for, for a USB port. And then it had ghosting all the way to like about here. <laughs> That's MakerBot replicator quality. It was a MakerBot replicator X2, if I remember correctly. It was bad, but that's also the very first 3D printer I ever got to use. Um, did I turn this on? I did. Uh, hey, Jose. Okay, so where are we at? Where are we at? Let me check all that there. Okay, I think we're good there. So we're just let this connect to the network. Toasty boy. No, not toasty boy. Big pop post your OEP. There we go. Okay. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering the the status of uh, Toasty Boy, um, it was a little. It sucked a little bit to to clean the flex plate of the steak remnants uh, because it, because the problem is that video took like an hour to film, but it was only like 15 minutes of cooking. So like the problem was like you know it, it cooked. So I have stains on my flex plate now. So this is perfectly flat. Like this is perfectly smooth. You can't feel it, but I've gone ahead and, 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 and discolored my spring steel flex plate with steak. So because I have, it looks like a face. You got two eyes. This is now steak man. Steak man lives on my, on Toasty Boy's flex plate. It's, it, it's like an MR. It's like when you see an MRI of a baby. <laughs> It actually smelled really good out here too, by the way. It was the literally cheapest steak I could buy at Walmart. Um, salt, pepper, and a little Worcestershire Shire. It actually tasted pretty good. I ate the whole thing. I did eat the whole thing, for those wondering. And that was, I filmed that Tuesday morning, I believe. Um, and I'm still here on Tuesday. Um, so yeah. Okay, so the printer's online. Uh, there we go. So now we need to do firmware stuff. So let me pull it up. LDO Leviathan. So while I pull this up, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, do you want to win a spool of filament? Because every stream we give away a spool of filament from Polymaker. Um, so if you want to win that spool of filament, link in the video description, enter for your chance to win. Uh, we've got 130 people have already entered. So there you go. And while you're down there, if you want to help support the channel, the content I create and the things I do, consider becoming a channel member, Patreon supporter, or if you want to be really cool, you gift memberships to others. That's the best way of doing it because people also get memberships out of it as well. Um, and you get to hang out when we do cool stuff like game nights, which I want to do more of. Uh, we did one yesterday, well, gaming morning, um, and community hangout streams and whatnot. Uh, it's great, it's Grant stick. So here's the thing. I'm not the first one to cook a steak on a 3D printer. People have done it. I'm pretty sure the CNC Kitchen did it years ago. And usually you do sous vide. You cook the steak sous vide and you finish it on the printer. I wanted to do just the printer. So that's what I did. Uh, why cable chains and not umbilical? Because I like the look of cable chains. Also, I don't think I have enough clearance here to have a, a cable chain that reaches all the way, or uh, an umbilical that reaches all the way out here without it drooping down. Um, so that's why simple as that um dianos ten dollars cheers and appreciate it we need a mini hell diver armor i'm sure you'll find the mini tailor for donning it it is thank you rock the competitor thanks um you just scale the armor small i've got the helmet just scale it down um smash the like button and subscribe that's right if you're not subscribed subscribe uh use this <laughs> so i was going to try and use the hot end to sear it um because it is an e3d high temp, it'll do 500 C. That's enough to sear a steak. 500 C is enough to sear a steak and your hand if you're not careful. Um, but unfortunately, I, all my nozzles had plastic on it. I didn't really cross, want to cross contaminate, so I just said, screw it. Okay, so Leviathan V1.2. So last week, and by last week, I mean last Tuesday, not today, which is Tuesday, last Tuesday, um, we swapped out the electronics in here. So originally, it had no tool head board, and we had a Leviathan, or correction, not a Leviathan, a Physic Spider powering this printer. We've ripped all that out. We now have an LDO Nighthawk tool head board, 
and we do have an LDO Leviathan controller board under the hood. Um, so we've swapped those two things around. Um, so now we still have Clipper. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually update Clipper because I might as well, everything's broken right now because it can't talk to anything because the controller boards are all broken. So I'm just gonna update all components because might as well. So. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Fabrico here? Where's Fabrico at? Oh, thought running CAN cables were a no-no in cable chains. You can't. The guy who designed, uh, is it Hark K? Pretty sure it's Hark K. Uh, the guy who designed, is it Hark K? I can't remember. Um, the guy who designed the uh, the tool headboard, the Nighthawk, he, he runs the, the chain through the, the drag chains. He runs the cable through the drag chains and he's done it for like over a year and a half and it has been an issue. So. Uh, he's doing the update that breaks everything. Everything's already broken though. So we can't break anything if it's already broken. So, uh, are ingested VOCs better or worse than inhaled VOCs? That's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, ba, 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 ba. The cable is specially designed and ready for cable chains. There you go. Cable is designed for drag chains. I've got it in uh, the LDO V2, and it hasn't been an issue. Uh, Tallboy does have umbilical. Tallboy is umbilical. Chain won't break? No. Why would it? It's 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 a single. Yeah, I don't know if that camera is on. No. It's a it's a single fat cable that's well insulated. Th this. You can see the cable here. Okay. Do, do, do you mistake us for bamboo putting underrated cables in our in our machines? We don't do that around here. We test stuff before we release it. So yeah, it's a proper drag chain. It's a proper cable. I'm sorry, ba bamboo is not gonna live that down. Bamboo is never gonna live that down. Hey buddy. What are you doing out here? Um, I want a juice box. You want a juice box? Yeah. Well, then go get a juice box. You know where they are. In yeah, they're in a the garage. You need help? Yeah. Okay. Where's the juice boxes? Are these the juice boxes? Okay. Here. Take all these to mommy. Here you go. Here you go. Take those. Well, you, you wanted juice boxes, so you got a whole pack of juice boxes now. There we go. Uh, updating, updating. What's the name of the installation padding on Toasty? Um, Reflectex. Reflectex. It's this stuff. Got a whole spool of it here. It, it looks like bubble wrap. Go to Home Depot in the installation aisle. It, it's basically bubble wrap with aluminum mylar on it. When does chat get juice boxes? Um, if you guys donate enough that I could I, I could afford a full a, a full trip to Open Sauce, <laughs> then I'll get you juice boxes. <laughs> Uh, do you like the gift of the bamboo test robots? I want to make a joke about that, and I, I figured it would be bad taste. So I'm going to put this joke out here, knowing this joke will not go over well with some people. Um, and it, it, I'm making this joke because I think it's funny. Okay? But it is good to see that bamboo got the bamboo subreddit involved in uh, testing of their printer, because I'm, I'm sure they are very good at that motion I'm sorry okay uh, Mr. Minden gifted five community memberships cheers and appreciate it open sauce seems super fun it does and I'm having hardcore FOMO I'm having hardcore FOMO because um, I've looked up how much it would cost for me to go there on my own dime um, and it's a lot <laughs> more than I've gotten a sponsor for, for anything before, put it that way. And the problem is, I don't know if I'd be able to do a lot of videos there. Cause it's, it's like a networking thing for content creators. Like, yeah, you, I would make a video too, but it'd be hard to like, you know, 
go to a rep rap fest, I could make a ton of videos. Open sauce, I think I could, but it, it'd be, I don't, I don't know how much of an overlap there'd be. Lee Smith Workshop gifted five community memberships. Did I already say that? Or no, that was Mr. Minden. Um, any rep rap festival in Eastern Europe? Uh, I think Frusa does something like that. Trogdor gifted 10 community memberships. Cheers and appreciate it. <laughs> What did I got? Oh yeah, the goop. We're, we're still waiting for the, the firmware update. That's what we're doing. What's my thoughts on the Trodet? I don't know, uh, but I got a Saval SV08 that we're gonna be unboxing on Tuesday and building it. And apparently it takes like an hour to build. So we'll find out. Uh, I just got my P1S and love the printer. Yeah, the P1S is a great printer. I got a P1P, which is the P1S, but with the panels off because I think they lost the box in the warehouse. Um, and then they found it. And the P1P became the P1S. I, that was the stupidest thing I've ever seen in terms of marketing. That was why the P. Ah, anyways, um, yeah, P, P1S is a great machine. It, it's honestly my go-to recommendation. If you like, hey, I want to buy a 3D printer in 500-ish plus minus a bit. Cool, go buy a P1S. It, it, you can't go wrong unless you have a business. Unless you you need it for business use or you're worried about network security issues. Um, uh, so what's the best for the channel gifted memberships or just wads? <laughs> Technically, I get a better cut from Patreon, but the way YouTube works with memberships and whatnot, it's just easier with memberships. It, I know it's weird for me to say, give me the money through the way I don't make as much. And I, I find that weird. Like if you want to support me monetarily, Patreon's the best way to do it. Actually, PayPal directly, but nobody ever does that. Uh, Nero3dp at paypal.com um, or at gmail.com, sorry. Um, but it's just so much easier to work with YouTube members. Cause when I do like the membership streams, I hit go live alert, all members and all members get an invite. Whereas for Patreon supporters, I have to make an unlisted stream. I have to share the link in Patreon. I have to hope they check their email. Then I get like four people show up. So versus YouTube where you just get a push notification. So, wow, this thing needed an update for a while. <laughs> Uh, the fact you can't see a print history from its internal storage really annoys me. Yeah, they, I really don't get like why they went roll their own with firmware. I understand why they did it. They want full control over their machine, but they leave so much utility on the table by basically ignoring all the open source developments in 3D printing. It, it, it means they got to spaghetti code their own stuff. It, Small SV08 is a Core XY. Like, yeah, it's uh, a second here. Da, 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 da. Hopefully, I don't think my address. I don't think my address is on this box. Let me just double check. I don't want to leak my address. Nope, we're good. Yeah. Um, whoops, here we go. The ball SV08 <laughs> in a box. So we will be playing with that on Tuesday. Because I'm not allowed to play with it before then. Also, um, I know stuff that's not public about it. If it works out really good, like if, if it performs, as close as a, if it if it's basically a, a boron in a box, okay. If it works as good as a boron in a box that you could build in an hour, um, and there's no QC issues and it's like a solid, reliable product and it performs well, it's gonna be big. Cause it's uh, I don't know. And I know some of the details about it that aren't public yet that I can't talk about. But uh, let's just say I I don't. I hate being in the used car salesman hyping hyping up products. I hate doing that. I don't do that. But I've got the spec list and the price list, and uh, I can't talk about them because I'm not supposed to. But if it does deliver, it'll deliver. Um, so bed size, it's 350, I think. Is it 350? Did they announce that? I don't know. It's a 350 bed. It's that big. Uh, 
or are they teased? I know. I gotta do something while firmware Lippertus decompresses. Uh, they did it with a good quality for a third of the price. Yeah, and it actually worked better because it was 32-bit. Aren't the Trodons like pre-built forth? Trodons are Vivendos, which are Formbot. It's the same, Formbot and Vivendo is the same company. Um, at least I'm pretty sure they are. As far as I'm aware, they are the same company. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of the same thing. Saval has been pretty good. I've liked Saval's. I actually got really disappointed in Saval when they, they came out with the SV06 line, and I'm like, wow, these are great. And they come out with the SV07, which is just a shitty Ender clone with Clipper. I, putting Clipper on a shitty Ender clone does not a good printer make, in my opinion. They, they, they should have stuck with the SV06 platform and just put Clipper on that if you want a Clipper. So. Diving to my Tominans need to be eaten. That was me last night. I got so many achievements. I got, I couldn't, I, I didn't get it all in one dive because I, I did it over multiple dives, but the last dive, I could have got gone in 360 seconds. Um, hell dive uh, achievement and uh, hold my secondary, I'm going in, which is complete a, uh, any mission on extreme or harder with nobody in your, your squad dying. I did that solo. Uh, gone in 360 seconds, which is complete a blitz mission in under six minutes, including extract, and then hold my secondary, I'm going in which is, or hold my primary, I'm going in, which is complete a whole mission without using a primary weapon or a support weapon. I actually completed the whole mission without firing a single shot. So I, I dropped in, I just I just threw around eagles and orbital airstrikes on a bunch of bot farms, ran to the uh, escape or ran to the extraction and hid like a little girl until the shuttle came down and then I ran and jumped in it and got out and I didn't fire a single shot. <laughs> it was great, it was great. But the problem was I didn't get all the achievements on the one run because I did the first one, then I did the second one. And then on the third one, I was like, wow, I could have got them all with the third one because it just, the stars aligned. Um, have I watched Joel's Elegoo Giga Summary vid? I did. I actually watched it early because I'm a, um, a channel member of his. Um, I could have, I could have told you that. Like, did any, raise your hand in chat if you didn't, ex or correction, Raise your hand in chat. Okay, how, how am I gonna do this? Okay, put a one in chat. Here, we're gonna, we're, you know what, I'm just gonna do a poll. I'm just gonna do a poll, okay? Okay, start a poll. Did you expect QC issues with the Orange Storm Giga? Yes, no. Okay, we're gonna start a poll. Like, did anyone expect that printer at the price range and its size to just be perfect out of the box with everyone? Like, did did anyone expect that machine to just work? Like, it was a Kickstarter. It was massively underpriced. You bought, it was an 800 millimeter spec machine for the cheaper than a Voron kit from like most vendors, okay? Did you, really expect that thing to come in on budget, on time, and perform as expected. Did anyone? Like, I, I'm sorry, I, I got nothing against Elegoo. I, I wish every printer was great. It would, you know, it, it would make things a lot better because people would compete better, okay? But like, did anyone expect a $1,200 printer that was 800 millimeters cubed to actually come out of the box and work great. From like, like honestly, if Prusa were to do it, I would I would be okay. If Bamboo came out with a machine that big, I'd be like, you know what? They're probably not gonna. It's probably gonna be okay. Because I would honestly, you know, as much as I poo poo on Bamboo, you know, as long as they don't, it doesn't have a moving bed. Okay, so they don't have to worry about the bed cable. Okay, it doesn't have a moving bed. If Bamboo had come out with a machine like that. It probably would have been pretty good out of the box. Same with Prusa, because I, I trust Prusa to do a decent amount of in-house testing before releasing something like that. 
Um, D flow seems to uh, not many issues. Yeah, but the D flow that's a custom machine by a guy who's designing on his own from scratch that uses a pellet feeder. That's a completely different beast of a machine. And I don't think he's selling it. It's just a self-designed machine. And he's only in, he's the one editing the videos too. So it's kind of like, you know, what, how, like when I build a Voron, it's like, oh, Vorons are great. I build Vorons all the time. And then you get somebody on the subreddit who built a Voron using the wrong wires, the wrong components. And they were like, hey, I, I looped all my Z motors together because I only wanted to use one motor and they complained about it working. Oh, he reformed the orange. Did he, okay. How long have the Orange Storms Gigas been out for? Did he review it? Or did he unbox it, read the specs and show off a couple test prints? Did he do that? Or did he actually do a review? Because the machine hasn't been, in my opinion, the machine hasn't been available long enough to do a review on it. Every video on it has been like a preview video. Because how big that is, People haven't been able to even print something the full build volume. He did a review? Okay, he did a review. A couple hundred hours and, and shit on it uh, a bit. Okay. So he did, okay. So if he does have print time on it, that's okay. A few prints. You can see his huge fridge. Okay. Okay, so he did do a review. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'll give him credit there. Because that's a problem a lot of the time I notice is because of the, everyone wants to be the first one to get a video out. The amount of times I see a YouTuber put out a video that's a review when it's just reading off the spec sheets with like some fancy B-roll and here's a few test prints and half of them are just the included G-code. This is my review. That's not a review. Hey, we're done. Cool. Is, is this still going? Update full, done, cool. We are updated, sweet. The first thing I heard was not print. It cannot print full height. Do you feel that it wobbles while really high on the Z-axis? Oh, I bet. I bet that, that machine is not braced enough. It needs cross bracing. Anything That machine needs full on cross bracing at that size. I mean, people complain about Vorons being noodles at 2020. <laughs> A very bad idea with such pathetic flow rate with that volume. That 800 millimeters, literally, if you want 800 millimeters, you either need pellet or you should be printing with like an ultra high flow hot end. Um, with a spool holder with a 10 kilogram spool with like a one millimeter nozzle. Like that machine, like does it ship with a 0.4? Does it even ship, does it ship with a 0.4? Uh, included G-code isn't accurate for review. Oh, I know, but people do it. Could you use some MDF panels? Honestly, it probably would help a lot with rigidity. Hit up the home desk spot, pick up some four by fours, or correction, uh, four by eight sheets of plywood, rip that down, bolt that to the sides. It probably would help a ton with rigidity and you'd be able to print ABS on it. Probably not, probably wouldn't get it hot enough near the top. Okay, we are online. We're in. It's a proprietary nozzle, bigger than a volcano, not as big as a super and proprietary. You know what? The only company that in the past like six months that has come out with like a new product that I'm actually impressed with, Magneto. Peel Poly and the Magneto. You know why? They, they, they're, they're building a printer that isn't an enclosed Core XY. They're, they're doing something different. Is it, is it gonna be the, 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 the savior of all our problems? Probably not. It has its own issues. It's a, it's a new motion system, but linear motors, so they're doing something new. It's running normal clipper without BS skins on it and features removed. Yes, it's a, it's a forked version of clipper, but they're following all the open source rules with that. Um, it has a custom extruder and custom hot end that does use normal off the shelf volcano nozzles. So you can put any volcano nozzle in that. And also it has three different melt zone sizes. Like, uh, SEO8 rumored volume the size of Nero's box expect to be 350. Steven, you missed it because I have the box and it's 350. Um, is it 350? Zero member production date. When was my main? Mine was made. I don't know because that's in Chinese. Uh, Millennium Machine Works channel. Hey, what about you? You guys don't make. You make. You make burr machines. You don't make. Plastic splugers. Also, I gotta learn, I gotta learn um, fusion. If anyone has like a really quick, like how to make cam infusion video, 
because I, I went down the YouTube rabbit hole and it's like, I don't know which series I want to invest my time watching on how to learn cam because I want to machine a Helldiver belt buckle out of aluminum on this thing this weekend. Um, wait, you just use, yeah, for, for SSHing into stuff, I just use Windows Command Prompt. You can, it, it's, it's super simple. Um, I think the massive dimension pellet hot end was sent to people cost more than the Giga. Oh, I bet, I bet. By the way, we're gonna end pull. with uh, 90% of people. Uh, New York CNC, I, New York, no, New York CNC is okay. Winston Moy I like. Um, Titans of CNC I can't stand. It's Titans of CNC I can't stand. I, I tried watching it, I cannot, oh my God. I, as somebody who worked in a tool shop, who, who worked with CNC bros, if you, if you've worked in a if you worked in a tool shop with people who work at CNC, um, you know what I mean about CNC bro. You you know you, I can't stand it. No offense to them. I just I I, ugh, I can't stand it. it, it if you know you know. <laughs> okay, let's figure out how to do this. So I'm gonna try and follow the instructions um, for this because I, I want to see why I left the field. Yeah. Luckily I worked on the other side of the shop, but I was a uh, afternoon shift supervisor. So I had to interact with them and most of them are okay. I'll be honest. Most of them are fine. It just, yeah. Okay. Bug fix for Raspberry Pi OS bullseye app. Okay. Okay. So this guide assumes that the Raspberry Pi is already imaged with Raspberry Pi OS. We recommend OS Lite Legacy bullseye or like main sale. Okay. So we already have Raspberry Pi installed. Okay, we already have main sale installed. So now verify you connect to that SSID. Okay, we've done that. So now we need to do this part. So app view dev. What I'm gonna do is this. And then I'm gonna put me at the top. Okay. And then we apply this fix. Uh, Default passwords, Raspberry. Um, sudo reboot. Okay, now we wait. Uh, just wing it, it's easier than you think at the lookup solution to specific problems. Um, I, I like following the written instructions because a lot of people follow my videos as guide videos. And I like to try and find problems in written documents. Because if, if I can look at it where I kind of know what I'm doing and I can figure it out on my own, if I can find a problem in the written instructions that might catch somebody who doesn't know as much, then we bring light of it and hopefully get updated. We do that all the time, anytime we do a, a build. Start with floors for, well, I got wood. I got a little piece of wood I used. Um, the bro boy culture. Yeah, if, if you've ever worked at a tool shop, in, in my opinion, there's like two types of CNC operators, okay? Uh, well, three. You, ha you have the person who actually does the programming of the machine. They sit at an office all day and they don't interact with people and they just sit there and, and program all day and nobody talks to them. Uh, then you have the two people that actually run the machine. You either have absolute nerds who have pictures of like Naruto everywhere and like they're, they're nerd nerds. And then you have high school, jock bros who are now adults running cnc machines essentially and they, they didn't become american cops and they didn't make the nfl so now they're a cnc tech bro or a cnc operator bro you, you know exactly the type of person if you've ever been in a tool shop you know exactly what i'm talking about <laughs> uh cnc well i'm in canada so most of them were stoned either way okay um so i think we're back online okay so we're in Okay, so configuration for can only. So we're not doing can. We're not doing any can. Post configuration, UART. Okay, so we are in UART. So I, I think I still am set up for UART here. I'm pretty sure the spider was connected via UART and delete that. So let me just double check this. So delete console serial. I think I already had that deleted. I thought that was the F word for a second. One second. I thought that was the F word right there for a second. 
Okay, so I've already deleted that. Okay. So I'm pretty sure this is already set up. Uh, and delete that. Press Control Zero. Hit Enter. And Control X. Okay. Uh, what does Control Zero do? Or Control O? Okay. Edit boot dot that. Okay. And add the following at the end. Does DT overlay? Uh, disable BT. So I already have that right there. Oop. Make sure. Yep, yeah, I already got it there. BT overlay, disable BT. Okay, control O. Uh, enter, control X. Okay, and then reboot the Pi. Do a reboot. There we go. Catapult. Recommended bootloader. This USB area should be used for both USB. So now we got to do this. Will I be doing a vCore 4 build? I don't know. Um, Fabrico, if you're still here, hi. Um, I don't know. I've got a vCore 3.1. I I built the smaller one. I got a vCore 3 200 because when uh, they reached out, they're like, do you want to build one? I'm like, yes, don't send me the big one. I don't have room for it. So I built the little one. And I think that was a bad idea in my opinion because the machine is way overbuilt for a 200 spec. Um, I don't really use it too much because it's extremely loud. Um, it works good, it's just I don't use it. I, it just doesn't fit in my, the printers I use list essentially. Um, sorry, I was on the bench. Something about a V-Core 4, people want me to build one and apparently you're showing them off for the first time at Rocky Mountain, which I'm gonna wanna talk to you about over there and do a video. So you're gonna be on camera, have fun. Um, yeah, it's a tiny tank, and it's a much better tank than the uh, the second, I will say. That thing has not been used. The, se the second cube, was it? What was it? The second SK Go or the SK Cube? I can't remember which one we built on stream. We built that thing. I did a couple test prints with it, and then I put it in the other room, and I haven't touched it since. That machine, I did not like the build. I did not like its construction, and I did not like its output. It just, it felt like I was building a machine from like 2016. It, it felt like a really out of date 3D printer design. And it's highly recommended to have only the Leviathan connected to the RPI during this process. All other USB devices should be disconnected. Okay, so I guess I could just unplug this. I don't think it'll hurt if I just unplug it, so. Um. Okay, so that's unplugged. Okay, so it's highly recommended to have only the Leviathan connected to the RP RPI. All of you are disconnected. Okay, DFU or device firmware upgrade allows bootloader to be flashed to the Leviathan. The device should be wired as shown and powered on. The USB cable is required for both UART and... Okay. Okay, so I got to put the USB cable in this, I guess. Okay, um, so let me flip this over. Apparently, I got to do USB. Oh. Hopefully I didn't crush anything. Okay, so apparently I gotta do USB. So let me get a USB cable. Um, put that in there. And then plug that in there. Okay. Fell off into the table. Eh, just a piece of plastic. Just a piece of candy. Okay, SSH and the Pi, both the S1 and, uh, okay. Press both the SW2 and SW1 buttons at the same time, then release SW1 follow. Okay, so where is the buttons? Where are the SW1 and SW2? Ah, I hate when it doesn't. Okay. I hate when it does that, or it doesn't load the image. No. Okay, now it's working. Okay, so, okay, so there's SW2 and there's SW1. Okay, so which one is which? So SW1 is on the right. Okay. 
So I got my meaty fingers in. Oh my God. Okay. So what is it? Okay. Hold both. Press both SW2 and SW1. Then release SW1. Then SW2. Okay. So yeah. I can't. I can't get both my fingers in there. One second. One second. I need. I need something to poke it with. That'll work. Okay. Okay. I release that and then that. Okay. So I press both those. Okay. Okay. Uh, verify the board is in. So LS USB. Uh, the output should show a USB device ID STM micro in DFU mode. There we go. Okay, so we are in DFU mode. Okay. So install Clipper. So we've already done that. Stop Clipper if it was previously started. Okay. We'll stop Clipper. That's not what I want to type. What? What are you doing over here? Do you need me to fix the batteries? Do you need new batteries for the remote? Yeah. Okay. Come here. If you need new batteries, Daddy's gonna give you new batteries, then you can take it right inside. Um, I'm out of triple A's. Go tell mommy daddy's out of triple A's. Here, go bring that to mommy. Okay, go bring that to mommy. Go say daddy's out of batteries. Okay. So install catapult. When is the little guy gonna do his first printer build? I don't know, some point. I, I, I don't want to use him for content. I think that's weird. Like, if he comes out here, like, I don't mind if he comes out here, but I don't like using kids. I don't... YouTubers that use kids for content are weird. Yes, I know I've had him in a video a few times, but that was, I think, fair use. I, I mean... Last year, I made him a Mandalorian costume for Christmas, or for Halloween. That, I think, was fine, because he wasn't really the center of it. He was just there. Okay, create a virtual Python environment. Okay, cool. Here, let me turn the overlay off. You guys can actually see a little better. Has he expressed interest? He has. He, he likes coming out here when I'm working on stuff and helping. So if I'm out here at night working on something, he'll come out here. He has he has a little Home Depot apron. He got at the Home Depot one day. They had like a kid's thing. So he got a little Home Depot apron he wears whenever he comes out here. He goes and puts it on and comes out here. It's cute. Okay. So we do this now. What's a good age kid's first 3D printer? Depends on the kid. Every kid's different. What do you think of the Konami V2? <clears throat> I'm not a huge fan of putting a display blocking a major air intake for, you know, that affects how my prints turn out. Also, I don't like having a screen moving at 300 millimeters a second on my tool head. Okay, so now, okay, so now, the bootloader can use USB as the interface for both USB and CAM bus configurations. So now, CD, catapult. Okay, make menu config. Copy the settings as shown. Okay, 
So we have an STM32. Uh, processor is 446. Builds Cataploit. Cataploit. Build a Cataploit. Um, do not build. Okay. We got a 12 megahertz crystal. USB. So communication interface is... One second here. Because I want... I mean, I can just, you know, I'll just, I'll just leave the USB cable connected if this doesn't work. Okay. Um, I like, I really don't care. <laughs> it's getting power from it anyways. Okay. Um, that application start 32 kilobit offset, uh, USB IDs that, that enable bootloader, enable status LED. And that is PE1, enter. Uh, look down, it has UART. Does it have UART? USB can. Oh, here we go. UART. Here we go. UART. Okay. Sorry. So do not build that. Okay. So UART is US1 PA10 PA9. Okay. 32 kilobit offset, 2500 baud. That, 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 that. Okay. Cool. So it does have UART. That, that. Okay. Press Q to quit. Yes to save. So, okay. Make. Uh, I still think my favorite printer build of all time was my switch wire conversion. Nice. You know what? Honestly, I, I think I know. I think next week I'm probably going to do the video on the, the Cocoa Press. I'm not gonna do a review on it because I hate doing reviews. Plus it's t a type of printer that doesn't really need a review because it, it's more, I'm just gonna talk about my uses with it and what I like and what I don't like. And one of my favorite things with the Cocoa Press, no joke, it is the most fun I've ever had building a printer. The instructions and the way that printer goes together is just mwah, beautiful. Uh, why you are over USB, you have to set it, you have to connect it via USB to flash it the first time and we're flashing it. So it will talk via UART after it's flashed. So we have it connected via UART, um, which means we have it connected uh, with um, this cable here, this breakout cable. So it's connected over UART, but to flash it, you have to connect them via USB to, because it flashes over B USB, but it, it works over UART. Okay. Okay, so when it's done, it should say linking out catapult.elf, creating bin file, creating legacy bin area. There we're good. Okay, flash catapult on Leviathan. So now we do this. Okay, take a moment. Okay, so now we just wait. I hate how there's no loading bar. I don't like this. I'm scared. Did I do it right? Oh! Uh, file downloaded successfully. Resetting USB to switch back to runtime. Oh. Okay, I didn't get that USB thing, but for USB interface. Okay, nope, for USB or UART. Verify catalog is flashing. Press okay. Okay, for USB interface, so we're not doing USB, so for USB or UART. Okay. So, okay, so if I press SW1 on the board, um, check the bootloader status LED is blinking. Okay, so which one's SW1? So I press that, I should have a blinking LED on here. I don't see a blinking LED on here. Um, I don't see a blinking LED on here. Um, for 
Reaper UART. Okay. Flash Catapult on Leviathan. That, that, that. Maybe restart. I could restart. Um, validate. Okay, so for USB. Okay, for CAN bus. For UART. So I, I guess I could just do this. Um, for UART, uh, the output should look similar to the screenshot. Can't open file error. No such file or directory. Remove UART flash again. It didn't say anything about removing UART. say anything about a custom because uh, we're not doing we're doing UART did I remove the USB no oh shoot do I have to remove the USB I, I guess uh, remove the USB I remove the USB Let's try oh yeah I got a flashing light now okay I got a flashing light now okay And with verification. Okay, ah, uh, shoot, where was I at? Where was I at? So I ran this. Wait, wait, did I miss something? Shoot, okay, you are. Did I forget to do this part? Flash the board with Clipper firmware. Well, I, I took the USB out. Did I? Did I? Okay, one second here. One second. I think I got. Okay, am I? Am I? I could turn around somewhere. Okay. So we've done that. Flash catapult to Leviathan. So flash board with the bootloader. We've done that. The output flash would end file down resetting USB. Okay, so I never got this part. For USB interface for USB or UART, verify that. Catapult bootloader. Need to do a new make. Yeah, let me, let's start over. Let's start over. Let's start over. Let's start over. Let me turn this off and start over. Let me, USB UART. Yeah, but I don't want to use USB because I have it connected via UART. And I find I, UART, I get less finicky issues. USB, you get weird issues. Sometimes a USB cable just doesn't work. UART, I find is a lot more reliable. And it's a lot cleaner of a setup, too. It's, it's, it's right here. Uh, okay, so let's, let's... Can you restart the tab? Duplicate, rename, reset. Is there a reset? This is like, this isn't going to work. Okay, let's let's try this again. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Okay, so we've already mounted that required Pi software. So we've already done that. We've already connected. Uh, not all units have equal of lots of things changing. Here, so some cables are power. Oh, I know. I know. Okay. Um, 
So we're not doing CAN bus. We're not doing CAN bus, so we skip that. Okay, so we've already done all this. Okay, catapult bootloader, okay. Press both CW2 and CW1. Okay, so let's let's do this. So we'll hold that. Okay. LS USB. And DFU mode. Okay, cool. So we install Clipper. We've already done that. So now we stop Clipper. That's why did you Control copy, paste. Okay, we stop clipper, install git. Pretty sure we've already done that. Just double checking. You can, oh, you can do the check mark next to each one. Well, that brought me to a different page. Okay, then get clone. Already exists. Okay, create a virtual environment. Do, do, do. Come on. Has anyone got plans this weekend? What's exciting this weekend? Anything going on this weekend? Anything exciting going on this weekend, folks? What's happening? Install catapult or do that. Okay, eclipse Monday. Yeah, eclipse is Monday. I'm hoping, I am hoping the weather is nice. Make menu config. Okay, so it should look like this. So we've got STM32. 446, do not build, 12 megahertz crystal, you are on PA10, PA9, 32 kilobit offset, 2500 baud, PE1 status LED. Okay. Uh, just launched TD1. Ooh, what is, no idea what that is. <laughs> um, okay, hit Q. Okay. Now we're gonna go make, clean, make. See if that does anything different. Uh, putting my salad fork back together. Fun. Starship video from SpaceX. Yep. There, was, there wasn't really any new footage from it. Okay, so we're creating bin. Okay, so that's good. So flash catapult. So flash that with that. File downloaded successful. Resetting USB switch back to runtime mode. We never got this part. It just said, it just finished. I don't think, didn't see that last time. I uh, ran out of money to buy filament, so I'll be meditating in my room for the rest of the month. Why, why are you doing that when you could be delivering freedom to the communist bugs or bots and hell divers? <laughs> uh, just check checkboxes. All right. Well. See, it's saying, okay, so it says file downloaded successfully, but it's not resetting the USB to switch back to runtime mode. So verify the catapult is successfully flashed. Press the system and uh, check that the bootloader status LED is blinking. Okay, so if I hit SW1, I should get a blinking USB light or... or Okay, so I got a flashing light. So now I can unplug USB. Okay, so USB is now unplugged. So. So Clipper firmware installation. Let's USB that. You are, okay. So now, didn't we just do this? 
Didn't we just do this? Flash. Oh, we flash catapult to Leviathan. Now we're flashing clipper. That's right. Okay. So now you are. Okay. So CD clipper. Make menu config. Let me just double check here. Yeah. Okay. Make menu config. Copy the settings. Okay. So microcontroller, STM446, 32 kilobit bootloader, 12 megahertz crystal. Communication is that. That looks right. That looks right. Okay, cool. Press Q. Okay. Say make clean. Make. It should end creating hex file out clipper bin. So what is TD1? Oh, TD1. Oh, shoot. That's what that is. I got, I got one right here. I, I complete, I, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I got one of these. You sent me one of these. And then this showed up and I didn't know what it was. And I'm like, I think I know what this is. And then I put it in here and then I completely forgot about it until like right now. Because it showed up as I was like heading out. So I'm like, I opened up the box and went, what is this? And then I'm like, I'll figure it out later. And I put it in my drawer and then I completely forgot about it. I am sorry. I apologize. <laughs> okay, so creating hex file. Okay, cool. Now we got to flash it. Okay, flash the board with clipper firmware. Press SW1 twice quickly if the flash does not start. Okay, so now we do this. Okay. Oh, it's doing stuff. It's doing stuff. Flash successful. Okay. Um... And, and, and there's my SHA. Okay. So, okay, for USB, for CAN bus, for UART. There we go. There we go. No need to just TD1. TD1's the uh, the filament um, thing for the um, QForge. It's the QForge thing. So you you put the filament in it and it tells you the the hex ID of the color and its transparency and all that stuff. So I gotta print that now and put that together. Um, so does this just keep going? Like, can I, can I stop that? Okay, cool. Um, stop, stop doing that. Okay, so now we're done. Um, some sample configurations for 2.4 and Trident. There we go. Okay, so we have a Leviathan on a Trident. So what I'm going to do is copy all of this. Copy, so copy, and then we're gonna go here. Click that CFG. So all this is depreciated. There was nothing in there worth saving. Okay, so because this is so this would just be a this. Right? Oh, I think there's only one, right? There's only one. Yeah, one. Um, love when he reads the step and then does it. What do you mean? D did what wrong? I, I did that. The yeah, output. Oh, control C. Control C. There we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, so we got Core XY, 300, Max XL 10, cool, we'll leave that. Max max 15 for 12 volt, increase for 24, cool. We'll just leave that all for now. Um, let's 
step for Y. Um, so we'll go through and make sure position max. So I actually can get 245 out of this one, if I remember correctly. Um, oh, shoot. Okay, what is... Oh, shoot. We gotta go through all this. Hmm. Correct output address. What do you mean, correct output address? Look, where, where is the output address? It's dev TTY MAO, isn't it? Is it using tap? Yeah, this is using tap. And so we're gonna have to go through and set up the tool head as well. Um, what lead screws are, I, uh, shoot. I think it's, it's a TR-88. I think it's TR-88. Rotation distance eight, rotation distance eight. Uh, am I missing one? I'm missing one. Oh, here it is. Okay. What tap do I have? This is just stock. This isn't a tap kit. This is just normal, normal tap. Uh, extruder. So all of this is gonna have to go bye-bye because we got a tool head board. So goodbye to all that. Hit close. Um, get in files. Do I create file tool head board dot CFG? Put that in here for now. Okay, so we did X, we did Y, we did Z. Uh, heater bed, I will leave alone for now. Max power. No. Min temp zero, max temp 120, PID cool. Probe, um, we don't have a probe. Or no, we have an end stop. Do we still have a probe? I'm trying to remember how it's set up. I don't think you have a probe anymore. Let me, printers, uh, tall boy. This tall boy has the pretty much exact same thing. Uh, tool head MCU. Is there a probe section in here? Probe. Oh, no, I still have a probe, but it's the tool head MCU. That's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we still have that, so I'm going to have to redo all that. Uh, fan is fine, but fan is PA0. That's the print cooling fan. Nope, that's not there. So PB7 is fan zero. Remember that class. Hot end fan. Nope. PB0. PB0. Okay. Because that is my controller fan. Don't have filament runout. LED, no. Safe set home. Uh, because this is tap, I want this the middle of the bed. What is half a 350? So uh, 175, 175. I want that to be the middle of the bed. Uh, Z tilt. This is a 350. Okay. Board pins for the display. That should work. Do I need to uncomment this? No, I don't. Okay. Display, so. Comment for the display you have. Because I just have a 128, or wait, which one is this? Uh, rep wrap discount. Okay, no, I've got a mini 12864. 
This is the mini 12864, right? This is the mini 12864. There we go. Cheat code macro. I'll, I'll leave those alone. Front. Okay. Save and close. Okay. So that is Leviathan set up. Now we got to do the tool head. LDO Nighthawk. So I should be able to flip this up now. Should be able to flip this up now. I don't think I'm going to do anything under the hood um, anymore. Unplug the USB cable. There, right. there we go. Yep. Oh. See, I screwed up. I should do this full view because that way if I break it, it's on camera and I can use it for content. There we go. Always flip stuff on the big view. Because you, the last thing you want, and I've done this because I dropped a V0 on the stream, is I didn't have it in full view, which sucks. Because what's the point of breaking something if you can't use it for content? Okay, so now um, I need to plug in this guy. Does it matter if I plug it in while the power's on? Probably not. There we go. Okay, so that's plugged in. Okay, LDO Nighthawk documentation. Okay. So now, so we have this all set up, USB cam. Does it just, LS USB? Okay, it's not already in here. Okay, clipper config files, there we go. Part fan, da, 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 da. Where is firmware setup? Catapult and clipper, so we've already done that. Come ship with both catapult and clipper installed. I literally, you only ever need to occasionally update. Okay. So if it's already installed, um, how do you find out the ID? Uh, Uh, LS serial by ID. Yeah, that's it. Oh, hey, it's right there. There we go. So that's already installed. So the, the Nighthawk, you don't actually have to flash it. I know last stream we went through a whole bunch of flashing stuff, but I, I didn't read it right. It already has Clipper and Catapult and everything already installed on it. So you, you literally just plug it in and pull up the ID and call it a day. <laughs> um, so now, we're kind of all here. So where is the config? Hardware setup. Uh, there was a link to configs and I missed it. Uh, here we go, Clipper config, okay. So we got all that. So toolhead board. Um, delete that. Okay, cool. So this is serial ID. Here's my serial ID. Copy that. Copy. There we go. Um, so stepper X, X end stop. So I am not using X or Y end stops. Um, we need to set this up for sensorless. So I'll do that in the printer.cfg because there's no end stops on here. Um, we're, not use, we're not using the end stops on the tool head because we're setting this up for sensorless. Okay, so extruder. Uh, so it's NHK. Okay, so let's let's rename this. Rename Nighthawk. NHK.cfg. Rename. Okay. 
So there's our extruder and everything. So this has a Galileo 2. Where is all the extruder stuff? Should I not have deleted all that that I deleted? I think I should not have deleted all that stuff I deleted. Because I'm missing all my extruder stuff. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, I don't have this one in here. Okay. Um, that one's fine. Thermistor is fine. Uh, a resonance tester, comment for, okay. ADXL, resonance tester, output light, okay. So let's find Galileo 2. Or actually, which printer? Which printer do I also have? Tallboy, Tallboy has the exact same setup. Uh, Tallboy. I'll just copy it out of Tallboy. Because Tallboy also has a Galileo 2 machine. Uh, Toolhead MCU. So we need all of this. So we need that. Okay, don't need that, don't need that. Temperatures, grab all that. Okay, so grab all that. It's okay if the pins are at the bottom. I don't think it matters. Pull up resistor. And then the extruder stuff. I don't think. Run current. Okay. Um, so that is that, that is that, that is that. Where is... There's the pin. So there is the pro pin. Save and close. And so now, go to printer.cfg. Include nhk.cfg. Close that. Do I have a macro? Yeah. Shoot, the macros are probably going to be all. Yeah. Printer.cfg. Um, Macros.cfg. Okay. Probe. Go down to probe. NHK, you go that. There is no Y offset. There is no X offset. Uh, median, sure, we'll leave that for now. Save and close. What else do I need? So I've got that, I've got that. Uh, sensorless, sensorless. How is sensorless set up? Let's check out Tallboy. Because Tallboy has sensorless set up. Okay, virtual end stop. So TMC, oh wait, that's 5160. So would I just, yeah, that'd be, yeah. End stop pin. And that is TMC 5160 virtual end stop pin. Yeah. So that's uh, that's uh, Y and X is, X is that, this is Y. Uh, let me just double check, Boron. Yeah, this should, um, Boron tap. 
pull up the config just to make sure. Okay. Uh, taps activate. Okay. So updating config for tap, update your Z end stop under stepper Z. You want position end stop and change end stop pin so it uses your virtual end stop. Okay, so. Stepper Z, put that virtual end stop, all speech removed, automatically save value at the bottom of your CFG file. I don't have that, okay. Uh, update your Z homing position. If you use Z, safe Z home, uh, homing override, make sure that you have the center bed. We did that already. Update your probes offset. So probes offset. Um, probe X offset and probe should be zero now. Okay. Calibrate your Z offset for probe calibrate to tap activate G code. This G code will allow you your probe to be cold, but also prevent you from probing with a, so this goes, okay. So this goes in the probe section. Okay. Um, I think we're good. Save and close. NHK. Max extrude, max extrude. Oh, uh, pull up resistor. Shoot, I, I need the, um, where is it? Where is it? Sensor type, generic 3950. Where is sensor type? Did I not copy over sensor type? I don't think I did. Heater pin, did I get the heater pin? I got heater pin. Um, sensor pin, I can delete that. Why is the sensor pin different? Oh, that's a different MCU, that's why. Um, what is the thermistor on a Revo? Or sh what does this have? Uh, what hot end is this? This is the beta, uh, not the beta, it's the drop effect XG. Drop effect XG hot end. I think it's the XG. Hey, 75K. Okay, what is the thermistor type on this guy? Which one's the oldest? I'm assuming this one. Extruder. There we go. Thermistor type is that. Okay. I think I can save and restart. Let's let's see if it works. Moonraker disconnected. I hit save and restart. Uh Webcam kind of works, G-code file, machine, system load. Picture save, dashboard, I'm getting nothing on the dashboard. Let me uh, try reboot, shut down. Turn off one, two, ten. 
Did I ever restart Clipper? Probably not. I don't think I ever resumed Clipper function. I don't think I ever resumed Clipper. We'll find out in a second here, though. My screen isn't working, but I think I have to wait for Clipper to boot up for that to happen. Not that I ever really use the screen on here too much. Did I turn it back on? Yeah, I turned it on. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's angry. Uh, sensor type in section heater bed must be specified. Machine. Bed. Ah, uh, bed. Bed heater. Oh. Save and restart. Oh, still erroring. Uh, TMC virtual NSUP requires diag pin. Okay. Um, so, firmware, virtual.cfg. Which one was that? DAG pin. I thought I already had the DAG pin called out. Direction. Oh, I don't have the DAG pin called out. Um, Where is Diag pin? Diag, okay. Uh, so that's PG1 for uh, X and PG10 for stepper one. So I think I have A is, is okay, so PG1 uh, is, so is it just Diag pin? Dive pin. So this is, so that's PF15. So which one's PF15? PF15. So that's PE10. PE10. Right? That is the wrong section. Oh, it goes in, uh, in the TMC part. Yeah. It goes in the TMC part. It goes down here. Yeah. Step or Y. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Dive pin. There it is. Oh. It just commented out, so I'll just... And stepper X. There we go. Save and restart. Okay. Unknown pin chip name and stop pin. Where's that? Okay. Also, don't I need that little, um... That call out for sensitivity, where is that at? Uh, where is it? Chip name and stop underscore pin. Stop underscore pin. That's fine that's fine that's oh i've got two end stop pins that's why restart okay option control and section extruder must be specified where is oh control pid okay Uh, position end stop is not valid in stepper Z. It's right there. Oh, position end stop. Okay. 
MCU protocol error. Oh, shut down. Oh, boot up. Shut down. Okay, uh, so that is out of date firmware on the tool head. So I gotta update that. Uh, also need a driver SGT2 for TMC and stepper XY. Yep. So we gotta update that. Okay, so one second here. So let's add, um, so stepper Y, we gotta add this. Do two. Oop. You know, I'll start at one. Start at one. And stepper X. Step for Y, step for X. Hit restart. And comment the ADXL section. Oh, wait, it's in the motor section. Sorry, I put that in the wrong part. Um, it goes in here. And you said there was ADXL in here? Control F, ADXL. There is no ADXL in here. Restart. See protocol. Uh, the range is. I know. I know the range is that. Uh, pins need a in front of a sensor list for sensitivity. They already have that right there. You can see it right there. They already have the uh, the tilde. Okay, um, so I guess we have to update the tool head. Um, so let's do that. Yeah. Uh, you only need to, well, I, I need to update it because Clipper is bitching at me that it's not updated. So I think we, we have to update it because it's causing a shutdown. Like, I, I have to update it. <laughs> it won't let me not. Okay. Oh, that's the Nighthawk, there's the Nighthawk, okay. Okay, so uploading via Clipper, make flash. Okay, so, uh, compiling Clipper firmware, so see Clipper, okay. So hardware setup, no special hardware installing clipper, so it needs to be hooked up as so they've operated normally. The tool board, okay. Firmware updates, okay, so that is that. You're not gonna come ship with both catapult. Ideally, you will not only need, okay. It's okay, how to re-offload. Okay, so hardware, no special setup is needed for installing either clipper or catapult, simply needs to be hooked up and operates normally. Okay, by the USB adapter board. You also need access to the reset button on the tool board. This is normally done by removing the tool head uh, to the front and opening the tool head cover, okay. So compiling, the following instructions are for compiling new Clipper firmware. You need to perform these steps if you want to update your, okay. So log into that, CD Clipper, make menu config. In the configurations, choose RP2040. Um, and match the rest. So enable low level, bootloader offset is 16 kilobit. USB interface, USB IDs, and what is that? What is that? GPIO 8? GPIO 8? Is that GPIO 8? GPIO 8, yep. Yep, back over there. There you go. Okay. Uh, that looks right. Make sure you set to 16, otherwise you will erase the catapult. We don't want to do that. Okay. Q. Yes. Make clean. Make. You guys having fun? Put a one in chat if you're having fun. Uh, run ls and find the USB ID, which... Okay, there we go. 
And it should be run pip install pi serial. Okay. So pip install pi serial. What? And pip install pi serial. Why is that not found? Command not found. Pip three? Why are you saying pip three? You don't have pip. I know I don't have pip. Well, it, it, I'm just trying to figure out why it tells me to run pip install pi serial, but it sudo apt install. Oh, I don't have pip. Sudo apt install pip. Did I type the password wrong? There we go. Unable to locate package pip. <laughs> um, Python M3 install pip serial. Let's try that. No module named pipped. I don't know. Let, let's just, uh, let's see if this works. CD Clipper, CD Service Stop. All right, so now I need to, I hate doing this because I got to copy that, copy that. So make flash, flash device. equals slash USB serial da 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 error that error okay yeah, install pip3 okay cool um that's not working that's not working um we need pip have you missed the dev serial by ID? No, we did that. So it is wrong. Well then, okay, Harris, what is the right command? Because I'm trying to follow the instructions. The instructions don't have the right one. sudo apt install pip3. sudo apt install pip3. Unable to locate package pip3. Uh, you need to add dev serial ID in front of it. Huh? Oh. Uh, device equals okay one second here dev slash serial slash i id slash usb clipper blah, blah, blah. yeah it's still not working um pseudo python sudo apt install python 3 dash pip yes hey it's freaking working finally <laughs> so then why is that command not in the instructions because everyone who has this is going to run the exact same issue i just run into Jason, update, update instructions. Whoever, whoever's maintaining this needs to update it. <laughs> you didn't have any issues, Lance. I, I'm running the very newest version of Clipper, which is giving compatibility issues with this. This ships with Clipper pre-installed and everything. Um, the thing is, I've had this one since I think mine might have shipped before production started. So it's kind of, I don't know, it, it's out of date. We have to update it. Okay. Now I can do that. Flash error shit. Okay. Let's try the actual. Okay. So see. Okay. Let, let's do this whole bloody thing again. So let, let me get my actual ID. Um, 
So LS serial by ID. Put that there. Okay, cool. There's my that. Um, so CD Clipper, we're already in Clipper. Make service stop. Okay. And now I need to do this. Control that. Paste that. Control all of that. Paste that. Go! Error 225. What the frick? Do I have to push a button on this? We need Pi Serial. We just installed Pi Serial. Isn't Catapult for can? This isn't can. This is USB. We 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 just installed Pi Serial. Didn't we just do that? Oh no! Oh no! We got to do the Pi Serial thing. Oh shit! That's what I need. That's what I need. Pip install Pi Serial. Not found. <laughs> Pip install Pi Serial isn't working. <laughs> okay. Pip 3? Maybe if I write Pip 3? Install Pi Serial? It's doing something. Successfully installed Pi Serial. Okay, cool. Now can I do this? There we go. Successfully complete. Cool. There we go. Get all turned around with these instructions. Start. Okay, cool. So now, are, are we good? Cannot update MCU command firmware restart. Okay, shut down. Why are you shutting down? I got a fan though. ADC out of range, MCU. Okay, okay, that's good. We're getting, we're, I'm getting a fan. So what is what is erroring? So MCU generally ADC out of range. It's generally because when the heater exceeds its max or min temp. Um, so what? So that's the heater bed, max min temp, generic thirty nine fifty. Okay. Fine. Next. Uh, wrong thermistor on hot end or bed. So that's that's the right thermistor type. Min temp 10, max temp 320. So these are just the thermistor NH temp. Is it a thermistor in the Nighthawk board? No, it's, oh, it's not. Okay, where where would that be? Um, it's this one, I, I, I unplugged it, I disabled it. And, and this is the one that's built into the Nighthawk. So it shouldn't be this one. Because this is the one that's built into the Nighthawk. So that one should be fine. This is the external one that isn't plugged in. So I've, I've told it to ignore that one. No, it's built in. There, there's two thermistors. There's one that plugs, that's built in directly to the board. And then there's another one um, here. Let me, let me turn on, let me get this guy. Oh, this is annoying that I have this in the way now. Turn you on. Let me turn on the LDO V2, because that one has a Nighthawk board too. Is that the port you pulled off during the install? No. Um, so let's, let's, uh, printers, LDO V2.
Um, in what pin is the heater bed thermistor plug? A generic 3950. MCU shut down ADC out of range. It'd be nice if it told you what thermistor is giving the error. So in printer.cfg, the only thermistor is the bed, which is just the generic 3950 with a range of 0 to 120. Machine. NHK, there you go. Yeah, so this is the exact same setup. This is the exact same setup I have. Uh, NHK. Yeah, this is the exact same setup. Um, It could just be sensor type. Yeah, that's that's the right sensor. Temp min, temp max, control PID. Check the thermistor plug in the board at the right location. It sh there's only one location for it. There should only be one location for it. That is the wrong uh, screwdriver. Yeah, you know, it's plugged in the right spot. There's only one spot for it. And the wires are good. So what is erroring out? What is erroring Leviathan for the bed? We we just checked Leviathan for the bed. There there's only Oh, 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 maybe. Maybe, where is bed? Where is bed? Where is bed? Where is bed? Roller fan? Probe? Bed, okay. Um, I have it plugged into, I might have it in the wrong one, they're misters. Uh, PA1, that might be it. I think I have it in PA1. That might be it, because I don't have a hot end, so I plug, because normally, I, yeah, I, I might have it in PA1, that might be it. That's it! Oh. Oh, oh, I think we're good. Camera's waking out. Okay, I'm gonna have to... Okay, the, the, the camera's waking out. I, I might have to replace the, uh, the, the ribbon cable on, that might be a little... Mm. Okay, um... Okay. Let's uh, fire her up. <laughs> it seems to be working. Um, let's check. Oh, I can't. Frick, the only end stuff I can check is the, uh, the probe. Right? Uh, machine. Yeah, the only real end stuff I could check is the probe. Which is triggered. Okay, so Z end stuff works. Okay. Um, home X. Why did only one motor move? We got to go through the pre-flight checks. Uh, oop, not merch. Community, documentation, the build, initial startup, verify motor checks. So we got Z. So it goes up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, 
up, down. Okay. Z2, or correction, Z1, which should be that one. That's going backwards. So we gotta, Z2, we gotta go the other way. Uh, oops, wrong one. Z1, direction pin, reverse that, save, close, okay. And then this one. Oh wait, no, no, they go up. So that one was right, it's this one that's wrong. Oh, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I did it backwards. I did it backwards. Because this the, it drops the bed. So it is Z1 that's wrong. Direction pin. And Z. This one was right. And that's right. Save and restart. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Because it should be down up, because it's 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 a it's a trident. The bed goes down in the positive direction. Down up, down up. Okay, so that one's good. Down up, down up, down up. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, inside two. Down up. Down up. Okay, now we're good. Okay, now we're good. Okay. What time are we at? Oh, we're at 4:30. Okay. So that's that. So now. Um X. So this should all drop. There we go. Okay, home Y. You're going the wrong way. the trident where is the trident where is the trident where is the trident well, i guess it works for v2 try it there we go okay so x is okay y is not okay so x is okay y is not okay steppers are swapped swap a and b connectors okay so turn it off we'll switch the two motors around and then we'll plug it back in So, we unplug my nice wiring is now a complete disaster. Go. Turn it back on. Turn that on. There we go. Oliver, gifted a community membership. Cheers and appreciate it, Oliver. Or change the firmware. Yeah, but see, I'm already done. See, instructions say steppers are swapped. Swap A and B connectors. Easy peasy. Put that in the middle. Okay, um, let me start this. Okay, home X, drop the bed, that goes that way, it goes boop. Okay, that goes that way, yeah. That goes boop, and now home Z. That didn't sound right. Um, the belts might be a little too tight. <laughs> Let me back the belts off. I think I might have over tightened the belts. Let's try one more. 
might have had the belts over tightened a little bit. That's happened before to me. Doesn't like when the belts are over tightened. Okay, let's let's try this again. Home all. Oh. That didn't drop the bed that time. I don't like that. Okay. There we go. Why did you... What? Why are you at 32 micro step? What's going on here? What's going on? What's going on? Machine, CFG, 40, 32. Oh no, I have, that's in 400. 40, 32, 400, 40, 32, 400. Okay. 40, 32. No, nope, that was right. Save and restart. Okay. Home all. Drop the bed. I think I screwed up something because it didn't drop the bed the last time I, I did the homing. Okay. So now that's at 350. I think something screwed up. Oh, you're right. These are, these might, these might be 200 step motors. Yeah, let me update that. Let me update that. That might be why it uh, freaked out. These are 200 step motors. I forgot the LDO is, uh... here we go. Safe set home is set for the middle of the bed. It thinks it's going to 175. X stop still triggered. Okay. Um, we need to make this a little bit. Is it more sensitive or less sensitive? I think two. We'll try two. Um, all. There we go. That is moving slow. We'll speed that up. That is. There we go. Okay. So that is that. Um, now we need to do our Z offset. So that is that ends up location, probe testing, probe accuracy. It's not probe accuracy. It is, oh, first we have to tram it. QGL, Z tilt. That is out a country mile. That was out horribly. <laughs> Probe calibrate. That's right. That that first adjustment, by the way, for those wondering, was 12 millimeters. It was out 12 mil. <laughs> just, just, just a little bit out. Just a little bit out to lunch.
the newer version of Trident, the inverted mod. People like the inverted mod. Here's the thing. There's nothing stopping you from doing that from stock. I don't think it needs any extra hardware. Like it needs like a... Are we good? We're good. There we go. Um, all it needs is like some hinges, right? Like it doesn't really need a lot. Call me retract distance zero. Yeah, let me... CFG. Where is where is homing retract distance zero and homing speed? We'll do 75. Save and close. Now let's do um, probe calibrate. Calibrate. Okay, so now um, I need to drop this down uh, until we are. Okay, um, piece of paper. Why do I never have a piece of paper when I need a piece of paper? Thank you, Fetus. Good old Fetus for providing these nice little books that I can rip pages out of. Yep, I still use a piece of paper. So that's that. Save config. Trident really does need the extra space. You know what's funny? There's actually more extra space on a Trident than there is on a V1.8. So we actually increase the extra space in the uh, the V1 series with this. Okay, home, all. There we go. Now. PID tuning. Okay, so we'll do the bed first because that's going to take a while. Uh, PID tune, we'll tune the bed at 100. Go! Wow, look at that go. Uh, surface quality was improved after... Okay, let me see. What is OG speed? What is he asking about? Any thoughts on Mirage C's wobble decks for Z Trident? Here's the thing. I've never really had Z wobble issues. I don't know if it's because on Vorons we use integrated lead screws, but, like, I've never really had Z wobble issues on, like, any of the printers I own that I've built. And then ball screws, just don't bother with them. Can't you uh, PID tune and hot end at the same time? Um, I don't know. Can you? Can you PID tune a bed and a hot end at the same time? I, I've never tried. Nope. Yeah, I've, I thought you couldn't because it, it has to calculate something. Nope, nope. Okay, so yeah, so now, so now we wait. So, so how, how, how y'all doing today? You doing good? Clipper would block it. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Especially there's like a chance something can fail during a PID tune. So you kind of don't want it to. <laughs> One command at a time. Yeah, I guess that makes sense with Clipper and batch commands. What is the appeal of Boron or Rat Rig over the much less expensive Quarx Wise? Okay, Static Void! What's the appeal of working on a project car or building a table for yourself or, you know, doing anything by yourself instead of just bu build, buying something out of the box? Simple as that. There are, these are machines. Okay, firstly, before the current crop of high-speed enclosed Core XY machines, if you wanted an enclosed Core XY machine, you had to build it yourself because everyone was busy shitting out V-Wheel and uh, bed flingers to the end of time. So now, you know, only very recently in like the past year and a half, two years, have you been able to buy an equivalent machine of this 
for a lower price. That, that's a relatively new thing. Two, I like having full control of my machines. Simple as that. I like being able to modify and have full control over my machine. I don't like the fact that I, I fully rely on a company with cloud services for updates that are, are, who knows what they might do to the machine. I don't like that. I like having full, it's like Linux people. It's like how, you know, I, I run Windows on my computers because I don't care. But like, you know how Linux people are like, I like owning my machine. Yeah, I get, I get that. Also, the, the fact that I could do whatever I want with this machine, it's fully open source. I can change the extruder, the hot end, whatever. There's mods and whatever fully available. Also, if some people like building stuff. I, I actually like building printers more than printing on them. So. If it breaks, you can fix it. Exactly. Fun fish fact. Um, if you blow a bearing on this machine right here, ready? Let, let's, let, okay, this is PID tuning, but you ready? Let's walk through a scenario. I'm gonna give you a scenario. You're printing on your Voron, okay? This bearing right here, okay? This XY joint bearing right here, that's slightly out of frame. This one right here, it went kaboom. It exploded, it's gone. It has ceased to function as a bearing because guess what? Bearings are consumable. They will eventually fail. And especially with the cheap bearings we use in 3D printers and their small size, they fail a lot more often than larger bearings. So this bearing fails. How do we fix it? What do we do? Well, it's actually quite simple. Um, so what you do, and here, you know what? You ready? Stopwatch, ready? Okay, let me, let me get my tools ready. Let me give myself a, a heads up here, okay? That one goes there. That one goes there, okay. I have blown a bearing on my Voron. We are going to fix this, ready? Okay, start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just counting that so I know how many times I can do it. So that was what, seven or eight? I can't remember. Okay, I did the screw. One, two, 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 two. Out comes the screw. Okay, ready? You ready for this? You ready for this? Pull that up. Woo! Okay, I've got the new bearing. Okay, put that in. Tighten that down. Do, 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 do. How many times did I count? Was it seven or eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Stop. Under a minute. Under one minute to swap out an exploded bearing on the XY joint of my boron trident. Okay. So, support. One second here. Let's let let's do this. Let me let me do this. Okay. Let me. I'm having to prep this. I'm having to prep this. I'm having to prep this. Uh, can I search? Can I search on their site? How do you search on their site? That was all. Bye. Uh, price. Ascending. No, I want to. X, Y, Z axis. There we go. What's that? Okay. So, how do we do this on a bamboo? Bamboos are a very popular printer right now. Tons of people own bamboo. So, on a Voron, it takes a minute to swap out a bearing. Now, granted, not all bearings are as easy to get at. There, this bearing right here, you have to take the top off. There are bearings that take a little bit more to get at. Let's be honest. Okay. So, what is the very first step when you blow the 30 cent bearing on your? Bamboo X1 or P1 or P1S. Okay, what's the very first thing you do? So the first thing you do is bust out your credit card and drop $114 Canadian on an X-axis carbon rod assembly. Because guess what? Your bearings are not replaceable. You have to replace, re remove and replace the entire assembly because these bearings don't just like have a screw holding them in place. They are formed into place with a pin that is non-removable. So if your bearing goes on your XY joint, 
you have to buy the entire assembly because guess what? You can't just buy the XY joint because the rods are epoxied into the XY joint with the tool head pre-assembled on it. And then to, dis to replace it, you have to completely disassemble your X1 or P1 series, remove all the panels on it, unbelt the entire X1 and XY belt assembly, remove the entire tool head assembly, remove the entire XY motion system, install the new X axis, and then fully assemble everything to replace a bearing. That takes less than a minute on this machine. So if you, if you, if you kind of want to, if you, if you, if you want to get my point about, you know, why I like having these machines on hand and working with these machines, that's why. On my bamboo, I have a video on my channel. It took me like an hour and a half. Now, granted, I was recording a video while doing it. So if I wasn't recording a video, it would have taken me less time. It took me an hour and a half to replace the bed sensor wire on my X, on my X1 carbon. On this one, it's right there. I just undo it, go down to the controller, swap it a new one. I replaced the entire gantry, entire X gantry with tool head on the Magneto X in the amount of less time than it took to replace one bend sensor wire on a bamboo. So as machines get older, as people use them more, stuff goes wrong on them. Stuff happens, stuff happens. And guess what? When you buy a car, you know, we are moving towards that point. I am not a fan of the fact that we're moving towards making serviceability of things harder. I'm not a fan of that. It's happened with phones. It happens with electronics. It's happening with cars. Now to work on a car, you need to be a mechanic and an electrical engineer with a software background, right? Like it, it, it's not as, you know, it's not like the old days where you just get the wrench. <laughs> okay, it's fixed. No, but you can still have that with 3D printing if you build your own printer. So, hey, we're done that. So let's uh, PID tune the haunted. So first I'm gonna set the uh, fan for like 20%. Okay, the fan is working. And we're gonna go for 255. So yeah, did he tighten back up? I did, I did. We're gonna have to rerun a, a, an input shaper too. Um, it's, it's, yeah, so that that's, you know, why would you get a, a, a DIY uh, machine? Why would you DIY a 3D printer over just buying one out of a box? I don't know if, if a bearing breaks, I can fix it on here for 30 cents in less than a minute of my time versus over a hundred Canadian dollars in an entire day. Now, if it's in warranty, they'll fix it for you. If you keep the original box and you ship the printer back to them and wait a couple weeks. So. You're also not taking cost in an initial machine. I'm not taking cost into consideration because here's the thing. Cost means different things to different people. Go on our 3D printing on, on Reddit. The amount of times that people are like, like the, I swear every other day you check, there's a, there's a thread. Why do people buy Prusas if they don't, if they cost so much? Because money doesn't mean the same to everyone, especially when you factor in something somebody uses as a tool. Why do, why do, why do, you know, why do I own a Milwaukee electric drill instead of one I bought at Walmart from Porter? They both, you know, they both take batteries, you know, they both go per. Why do I own a Milwaukee drill instead of one I bought at Walmart? They both do the exact same thing, but this costs more. Why do people buy DeWalt's over Milwaukee's? Why do people buy Hilti's or whatever over, you know, why does your mom own a Hitachi? Like it, 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 it depends on the use case, the user, what they're looking to get out of it. So that's why I don't really look at cost a lot of the time unless it's in like a really negative light. Like example, 30 cent bearing, $100 gantry to replace the same thing. So like, I hope you get what I'm, I hope you understand the point I'm trying to get across.
Uh, honestly, buy a cheap tool. If you use it enough, it breaks, buy a good one. But if you know you're gonna use it enough, just go right to the good one. So for example, Prusas versus Bamboo. A Prusa, you can properly air gap. A bamboo, you can't. Regardless of what Bamboo says, you can't properly air gap a Bamboo because it will always have that Wi-Fi chip in there that can't be removed. So in a lot of places, that's a no-no. If you know, you're working on anything where you're printing anything that's part that's confidential or whatever, do you trust it being on a cloud? I wouldn't. Regardless of who owns the cloud, Bamboo Goat uses Amazon for their cloud service. It, it's still an ingress point. It's still a potential failure point. Like, there, there is multiple different reasons why you would buy different things. Oh, I can remove that Wi-Fi chip. Yeah, you, you could, but it, who knows? Maybe the firmware will freak out if you do. Because uh, who knows what the firmware is? Uh, how are we doing on that? Are we done that? Cool. Let me save the page. What? Save config. Save config. Extruder option control conflicts. Oh. Um. I think I have to remove this now because it has it at the bottom. Save and restart now. Nope, it's erroring out. What is going on right here? Pain belt. I already did that, Dianos. Okay, uh, control. Why? What? What is it? What's going on here? Why is it freaking out? Heater bed. What? What's what's going on here? Save and restart. Did it not? Have control equals. Oh, that'll do it. Shoot, we're gonna have to rerun that PID, I think. We're gonna have to rerun the bed PID. Do that quick. Okay, let's rerun that bed PID too. By the way, Clipper throws out the first result of a PID so you don't have to wait for it to go down to room temperature. That's extruder, not bed. Yeah, it, it was the bed that was being an issue. Also change. That will be overwritten. Any value will be overwritten once we're done the PID too. And it was the extruder that was giving us the error, not the bed. Yeah. But yeah, for those about, oh, remove the Wi-Fi chip, it, there might be a, a firmware check on startup. And guess what, Bamboos, you can't modify the firmware, so. E even X1 Plus isn't modifying the firmware. It's modifying the Linux install on the machine that has the firmware underneath it. So. Won't save the new bits and include a config. Yeah, but I can copy them over after. So how does it calc the temp curve of the bed? It's not at ambient. Well, it, it's not worried about the bed. It's only checking the temp curve of the, the heater block in the hot end right now. It it doesn't care about the bed. When you when you when you're PID tuning the bed, it doesn't care about the hot end, and vice versa. And then when Clipper does a PID tune, see how it does all these humps there? It throws out the first value. It always throws out the first value. So that way you don't, it, 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 this is the part that it checks the PID. It's this stuff. This initial heat up is thrown out. So that way you don't get errors. And then that'll be it. And then we'll do the draw. So if you haven't entered for your chance to win some Polymaker filament, link in the video description, enter for your chance. Cause we're gonna do the draw right after this is done. Um, because we're gonna have to call it there because I gotta make Din Din for the fam fam. And then uh, tomorrow night, I think tomorrow night we'll just do a printed chill. We'll, we'll get this printing again. Um, and we'll, we'll do a printed chill tomorrow night, I think. Because Tuesday we got the SV08 to unbox. So I don't want to get a mess going in here. So 
because we what we might do it might be a sand and chill because i gotta sand all this stuff i gotta get the the hell divers armor nice and ready for paint i gotta get all this stuff good to go which really sucked because i was outside this morning sanding and then i'm like i'll put a coat of primer on some of this stuff and then it started snowing like i literally put primer on it went inside walked upstairs and looked out the window and it was snowing and i'm like shit so i had to like run outside and bring this in I was like crap <laughs> If the, okay, here's the thing with the SVO8. I can't tell you everything about it because there's NDA stuff. Well, not, there's an embargo and it's not like I sign anything, but when a company says, please don't, you know, give any information out before a certain date, which is next Tuesday, you, you, you'd be nice. Otherwise they just won't give you stuff in the future or you end up on a list like the next layer. Um, so, um, what was I saying? So yeah, so I had to take it all in because it was snowing. <laughs> when is it? Tuesday. But yeah, if that, if the SV08 delivers on the specs and its performance, for the price I haven't announced yet, holy shit, game changer. Went on to the next layer. Oh, he, uh, he, he leaked the A1. He put out his A1 video early for channel members. Paid channel members got to watch a embargoed video early, which was totally not his fault. It was his team. If it's your team, it's your fault. But anyways, yeah. He got he got taken off uh, their exclusive affiliate list too. So no affiliate program for him. Which I'm not. I'm. I, I think I'm, I'm affiliate with Prusa. I never. I don't think I've ever advertised it. I have a link in the description. I don't care. I'm not a huge fan of pimping affiliate links. Like yeah, go check out the affiliate links in the description. But people that like every two seconds. Hey guys, I found this mouse. You want to buy it? Here's an affiliate link. I hate that. It's, it's so tacky. I hate it. I hate it. Like, I, I don't even put affiliate links for products that I'm unboxing. Because how what if if I put out an affiliate link, I view that as endorsing the product. Simple as that. Now I view differently for paid. This is this is gonna sound weird. If you put out a pay and an affiliate link, I view you, I view that as you endorsing the product. If you do an ad read for a product in your video, I just view that as you get in a bag. I don't care. I don't view that as an endorsement. It's weird. I know that sounds really weird, but that's like my opinion and I'm allowed my opinion. Miss revenue. I really don't care. I, I make enough off of YouTube AdSense, the odd sponsorship to go to an event, which I usually break even for most of the time on that. Um, YouTube memberships, uh, super chats, Patreons, direct donations on stream and whatnot. I'd rather just do okay with that and not have to be a freaking used car salesman for an additional 10% revenue. Like, I, I you know, I, I get revenue for the Polymaker affiliate link. I get revenue from that. I, I got an AliExpress one down there. Every couple of months I check it out. It's a couple hundred bucks. Cool. But I don't like shove them in your face. I don't know. Like, if Raid reaches out to me and like, hey, we'll give you a grand if you play Raid on a stream. Yeah, I'll do it. I don't care. We'll, 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 we'll shoot the piss and we'll, we'll have fun. Who cares? Save config. There we go. So what we'll do is I'll get those values. Machine, NHK. So KP, three, KI, 1.4, and KD, 69, nice, five, five, eight. Save and restart. Uh, do people with ad blockers affect revenue? Yes, they do. However, I make roughly, last time I checked, let me let me pull it up here. I, I, I won't give you exact numbers, but I am very open. If you have any questions, like I, we normally do this on like the member streams, 
but I'm very open about discussing analytics with people. Like, I won't give you exact numbers. I won't give you exact numbers how much money I made, for example. Like, I, no, I won't do that. I, I make enough. Am I, am I Mr. Beast? Hell no. But am I making enough that I can pay my mortgage? Yes. Um, so let's find a, a, a video. Okay, um, the Milo video. That's got 50,000 views. It's a couple weeks old. So the Milo video, okay. Uh, revenue. So my Milo unboxing video where I just go through the Milo kit. So just to put it in reference, uh, let's see more. Is that a video or a stream? Uh, how much members pay? Top five. Where's, where is? Where is, ah, shoot, where is it? Is it not, it's not telling me how you make money, watch me to ads. YouTube premium. Okay, so on that video, to put it in perspective, 85% um, of the revenue from that video is from watch page ads. That's you, that's you just watching the video. And an ad pops up before it, there's a, a banner on the side. 85% of it is from that. Uh, 50, or correction, 14% of it um, is YouTube Premium. So if you watch a video of mine and you have YouTube Premium, you don't get ads, but I make about twice off of you than I would from a random person watching the video. So I guarantee you 14% of my viewers don't have YouTube Premium, um, but I make more off of them. They, they are worth more. They, don't, they aren't worth more than the majority, but they are worth more. And then 0.4%, somebody became a YouTube member on that video. So, do premium YouTube accounts count more? They, they don't count for more of my revenue, but their share of the revenue individually is more. So here's the thing, I, I, don't, I don't use YouTube premium because you know why? I have ad blockers. You should have an ad blocker too because unfortunately the way the internet is, a lot of ads are very predatory that it's very easy for people to sneak in back doors and all kinds of funky shit on computers nowadays, you should be running an, an ad blocker for your own personal protection, let's be honest. And as somebody who has a kid, and you know, every now and then he'll get the tablet, there's some effed up shit in ads. I'm sorry, especially on the internet. So yeah, I run an ad blocker. If YouTube had premium set up like Twitch Prime, where if you have YouTube premium and you get um, if you got a free membership a month. So imagine if you pay for YouTube premium every month, you can subscribe to a channel membership for free. That would be great. I would do that in a heartbeat. But right now, the only advantage of having YouTube premium as a user is you don't see ads. Well, I have Firefox and uBlock Origin, which takes care of that. And content creators that I watch, I'm a member of their Patreons or YouTube memberships. Everyone who has a YouTube uh, membership program or Patreon or Ko-fi or any of that should have a one or $2 tier. Because guess what? I spend probably close to $100 a month on that stuff because I support a ton of creators on various different accounts and platforms for a buck or two a month. And I know they will make more off of me giving them a buck or two a month than they'll ever make off of the ad revenue of me watching their video. So. Uh... So yeah, so there we go. We are back online. This is good to go. I haven't checked the extruder. We'll do that tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll get the extruder, use Opera. I don't like Opera, I like Firefox. I don't know. I used Firefox for years and then I switched to Chrome and then Google did with what usual does and I went back to Firefox, so. Uh, Brave browser. I don't know. I don't like Brave browser because of the logo. It sounds really weird, but that stupid lion logo I hate that logo. It is, it, it, this stupid lion logo. There are so many variations of this like lion face kind of logo. And it's all like dude bros and crypto shit. So it just puts me off right away. It, it sounds really weird. Uh, pie hole, I don't have pie hole set up. I need to do that. I have an Unraid server I can run it on as a, as a Docker or whatever, and I've never set it up. Okay, um, on Android TV. Well, my, my 
I, my TVs actually have computers on them. I just have little like shitty, um, like, you know, those little boxes that like you go into an office, they have like an old i7 on it. Like, I think the one in my living room is like an i7-4770 or something, like a dual core. Um, you buy those, you put like Linux on it and you just use that for your TV. That's all I use. So that way you can watch anything you can on a computer on TV. Okay, uh, let's do this giveaway. Let's do this giveaway. So we'll get this printing tomorrow. We'll, we'll do a print and chill tomorrow night on this. We'll get it up and going. I I need to print new clips. I broke like all the clips taking the panels off this and they're old. Um, the only white I have is PETG. So I'm gonna have to get some PETG going on this. Um, but let's do this giveaway. So every stream we give away a spool of Polymaker filament that Polymaker provides for this. Um, so link in the video description. Uh, you, if you didn't enter, it's too late. You'll have another chance tomorrow night. Uh, but be sure to check out the Polymaker link in the description because it is an affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything extra and goes a long way in supporting the channel. So Polymaker is awesome. So in fact, I gotta, I gotta put in a big order this weekend because I am running low because fun fact printing a full set of Helldivers armor and a full set of T45 power armor uh, uses up a lot of room. Also my screen isn't working so we still got to figure that out. Okay um, I need a number between uh, three and seven. Nuck boxes. Yeah nuck boxes are like the cheap ones that people use in like offices. Five. Five, five. Okay, uh, do we have an odd number? No, we don't have an odd number, so we don't have the random color today. And the big winner is... David Coes. I've seen David around. Congratulations, David. You have won yourself a spool of Polymaker filament. You will get an email from me after the stream ends uh, with information. That is a funky color. Cool. I'm gonna have to look that up. Um, information on how to collect your filament from Polymaker. You'll get an email from me after the stream ends. Um, how many spools to print the HD2 armor? It's hard for me to say because I printed it on multiple printers and some of them had um, partial spools. Like I was using the AMS system on the bamboo to, you know, finish off spools. Like that's why this is two colors. Uh, not a ton but at least like four or five. I would say four or five. Cause I had to re I also reprinted a bunch of stuff. Cause I'm, the armor is designed for somebody who is six foot. I'm five foot nine and a half. Um, so I scaled all the armor to like 95%. And for most of it, it works okay. Like the shoulder pads and whatnot, like 95%, you know, th that works. Um, but for the chest, that was a little too tight. So I had to reprint all the chest pieces. And then the, uh, the helmet, is also scaled um, for a head that is 24 inches around. And my head is 22. Um, so I also scaled the helmet to like 95%. And uh, it's tight, but I want it to be tight because these look better when you don't look like a bobblehead. The problem is I have to wear a neck gaiter because my beard sticks out. So in game, this is scaled right because if you look at a Helldiver in game, the um, this line here is pretty much lined up with their chin. So when you wear the helmet, this is like your chin. So it's not like it, it hangs down like here. It, it ends at your chin, which my chin ends up here. The problem is I got a beard and my beard sticks out. So I have to wear like a neck gaiter when I wear this. So, so yeah. So this is, this is scaled correctly. Now I can see. Okay. I don't even wear that helmet in game. I, 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 it's funny. I'm doing the BDO one. And I also have the, um, I can't touch it because YouTube. I've got the diligence, which actually they buffed it. The diligence isn't shit anymore. It's not great, but it's not shit. Um, but I, I, it's, I'm doing the, the, the BO1 tactical armor, the basic stuff. Okay. Um, we're calling it there. We'll continue with this tomorrow. We'll get it printing tomorrow. We'll get it all set up. That is warm. I can feel where the controller is. This is the fan. One second. I got to check this. I got to check this. I got to make sure the fans are kicking on. Um, heater bed 45. Are those aren't heating on? Okay. I'm going to have to play around with the... 
Ooh, I'm gonna have to play around. Okay, remind me tomorrow. We'll do it on stream tomorrow. I gotta make sure because my controller fans aren't heating up. My controller fans aren't kicking on. We gotta fix that. Okay, we're calling it there. I'm hungry. I gotta make dinner for the family. Hope you had fun today. We got the uh, Leviathan and the LDO Nighthawk all programmed. Config's all done. We had to rebuild the config from this from scratch. Um, so yeah, so tomorrow we'll get this printing. We'll do the last little tweaks, get the screen working, make sure my uh, controller fans are going because uh, the fact that I can feel the heat coming off the controller from here, it's not a good sign. Um, so it is the weekend, it is Friday. Be safe out there, wash your hands. Uh, I read that part last, I screwed up. Uh, shout out to Polymaker for the spool of filament. We gave away this stream and every stream. Links for them and more in the video description. They are affiliate links. They don't cost you anything extra and go a long way supporting the channel. And for those that donate to the channel, gift the memberships to others or became members of the channel yourself, I thank you. I would not be able to do the things I do, create the content I create without your continued support. You make it all possible. Um, next week, just a heads up, we are going back to the early time slot. So it'll be 11 a.m. streams, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern time zone for the Monday and, or correction, the Tuesday and the Friday stream. So SV08 unboxing and build on Tuesday. Um, and then it'll be this week. And then next week, there won't be a Friday stream. So this week coming up, there'll be a Friday stream, but the next week there won't be because Rocky Mountain is coming up in like two weeks. And I could, I, I'm all ready for it, but I did not realize it was two weeks. <laughs> So we got to get ready for that. Okay, calling it there. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Enjoy your weekend. And I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.